Today's video is going to be all about sunscreens. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Lisa Monique Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. So in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the different types of sunscreens, what we should be looking for, some of the common uh, sunscreen ingredients, both physical and chemical. And then also I will give you my recommendations on products that you can try. So before we get started, I do want to say that I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not a scientist, I am not an esthetician. I have talked to my own dermatologist um, about sunscreens. I have done some research. I've actually looked up the scientific journals uh, for some of these ingredients and done some of my own research. I have a few links below, but there's a lot out there. So I highly encourage you to do your own research um, when deciding what products that you want to use. Okay, so I filmed this a lot. Uh, this is like my third or fourth time filming and the video was just like an hour long. It was way too detailed about sunscreen. So I'm going to try and summarize everything to what I think are the main points. So there are two main categories of UV rays, your UVA and your UVB rays. And then there are two main categories of sunscreen, your chemical and physical. So I'm just going to go really quick and give you a summary on both. So your UVA rays are the rays, they're both long and short rays, and they are the ones that cause your photo aging. They may cause some skin cancers and they cause the breakdown of collagen in your skin. So when you're looking to protect your skin from aging, you're going to be looking for the UVA protection. Now the UVB rays cause more of the surface damage. So when you develop sunburn, it also may cause some skin cancers. So when you're looking at sun protection, you're looking for a broad spectrum sunscreen to protect against both the UVA and the UVB rays. There have been some recent studies saying that the protection against UVA, UVB actually doesn't stop you from getting the hyperpigmentation. That's why you still get tan while you're wearing the sunscreen. They are saying that iron oxides are the best defense against uh, melanin production, and that's usually in the tint. So tinted sunscreens tend to help best against the hyperpigmentation. So you might want to look for a tinted sunscreen for your face. Let, but let's go into the different types of chemical sunscreens really quick, some of the common ingredients. There are two main groupings of chemical sunscreens that I see out there in the majority of sunscreens. You have your avabenzone uh, combination sunscreens. Now avabenzone has been known as like one of the best sunscreens to protect against your UVA rays, but it is extremely unstable in the sunlight. So it starts breaking down in like 30 minutes. So they mix it with a bunch of other sunscreens that may or may not do as well, protecting against the rays, but they do help stabilize the avabenzone. So the most common combination of sunscreens with avabenzone are the ones with avabenzone, um, homosalate, I may be saying all these wrong, I'm going to just put them up here, octosalate and octocraline. So that is the most common combination. There are some that do not have the Homosalate, um, it's one of those ingredients that some people are saying may be good, may not be good for you. I have my own opinion on um, on those type studies and things like that. Uh, the second group of chemical sunscreens are the octanoxate and the oxybenzone sunscreens. Now we already know, it's, it's well established fact that both the octanoxate and the oxybenzone can damage the coral reefs. So they uh, have been banned in Hawaii, and I do not wear those type of sunscreens when I'm going out to the beach knowing that I'm going to get into the water. Having said that, in Europe, they're saying that zinc oxide is toxic to aquatic life. So now that everyone's piling physical sunscreens on them, I mean, in 10 years, they might be saying, you know, zinc oxide is a banned uh, sunscreen. You just never know because it can be toxic um, like I said, to aquatic life. So when you're reading and seeing comments and people saying, don't use this sunscreen, don't use that sunscreen, again, I think you need to do your own research because I think you could probably say something negative about almost all of the sunscreens out there in the U.S. Uh, today. There are a lot of new chemical sunscreens out there that have been around for like 10 years. They are approved in 
Europe and in Australia, but for some reason our FDA has made it extremely difficult for these new sunscreens to get approved. Uh, so when you see other people talking or recommending sunscreens, but they're not from the US, they might have different ingredients, even if it's the same brand, because there are a lot of chemical sunscreens that cannot be sold in the US. So the oxybenzone and the octanoxate. You will still see octanoxate in a lot of sunscreens. A lot of times it's mixed with a zinc oxide, so it has both the chemical and physical sunscreen combination. The one thing about the octanoxate, and this is where you can do your own research and make up your own decisions, but when I did my research and I looked at the study where they said it might be an endocrine disruptor, but after that study came out, there are other studies that kind of say, well, yes, it was showed some signs of being an endocrine disruptor, but the amount tested on rats, they have not shown it in humans, but the amount tested, you would have to apply it on 25% of your body every day for 277 years to use that same amount that they fed to these rats or applied to these rats or however they did it um, in four days. So there are a lot of ingredients out there that if we really took an dumped such a huge amount into a body or to, to a test or a petri dish, petri dish, petri dish, however you want to say it, uh, that can cause abnormal results. So I feel very comfortable personally using octanoxate as a chemical sunscreen, and it is in a lot of my favorite sunscreens. But again, you can do your own research and you can determine if it is an ingredient that you want to use, if zinc oxide is an ingredient you want to use, especially if you're out swimming a lot and going into lakes and rivers and things like that. I kind of feel like sunscreen's one of those ingredients that in 10 years, they're going to you know, keep constantly changing what is going to be considered safe to use. So use whatever one you will use to protect your skin from the UVA and UVB rays now. Okay, now let me give you a little roundup on some of the sunscreens that I recommend that you can try. And um, I have been using all of these and I will tell you, and sometimes I'll use a variety of these and I will tell you a little bit about that. One of them is missing, so I will, when I talk about it, I'll just put a picture up because after I finished filming this video, I gave my husband the sunscreens that I thought he would like using and he took one with him on a trip. So I can't show you the bottle anymore, but it is one that I uh, recently purchased and don't have to show you right now. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Avabenzone combination chemical sunscreens. I really like the Neutrogena Ultra Sheer Dry Touch. This is the one the dermatologist recommended to my husband to use uh, in the cockpit because uh, he is an airline pilot because there's a lot of sun that comes in through the windows or a lot of the rays penetrate through the windows. It is a very nice dry touch sunscreen. So it is a little, goes on white, it blends in nice, And then it has a really nice feeling overall and it feels really nice on the face. This is a three ounce tube. If you use the amount of sunscreen that the scientists recommend, this tube should, if you're putting it on your whole body, this tube should last you three applications. So if you have a family of four, this tube should not even cover your entire family. So I know people do not put on as much sunscreen as required and that's a applying it every two hours. So this shouldn't last you a day if you were out at the beach. I did take this one with me when I'm going outside. This is the one that I will apply on my arms and my shoulders, uh, as well as my face sometimes. I have a lot of other sunscreens that I will use on my face, but I, did, I was reapplying this one on my face yesterday when I was out in the sun all day. Another dry touch sunscreen, same ingredients, a little bit different combination, uh, different percentages is the La Roche-Posay and Thelios Clear Skin Sunscreen. This is oil-free, won't cause blackheads. It is also a dry touch sunscreen. It is a little bit thicker going on than the Neutrogena, but it feels really nice once uh, you have it rubbed in. So I really like both of these. Now I did purchase this little super group 
Oh, super group, super goop set uh, from Sephora to test out the different types of super goop. And first of all, it's like $25 and <laughs> I got these three little trials, but really this is two ounces of sunscreen. So it is equivalent to some of the more expensive sunscreens that you can purchase at Sephora and things like that. Some more of the cosmetically elegant sunscreen. So I have the unseen sunscreen, which a lot of people have talked about the glow sunscreen and the play sunscreen so my favorite out of all of them is the unseen sunscreen this is an spf 40. oh i did want to talk about spf this one's spf 60 this one's 70. so spf is your sun protection factor it only applies to uvb rays so none of the aging uh, rays the breaking down of the collagen and some uh skin cancers the higher number spfs do not give you more protection against the uv a rays. So this is just the burning rays. So if you have an SPF 30, you're going to have protection for about 95 to 97% of the burning rays. An SPF of 70 is going to give you another two to three uh, percent protection for a set amount of time. So I would not stress if you have an SPF 30, SPF 40, 50, or 100, because literally that's just going to mean maybe that first 15 minutes um, you have a little bit more protection. The secret to preventing the burns, sunburn, is to constantly reapply your sunscreen. So the Unseen is an SPF 40. This one is clear when it goes on. It feels so thin and it blends so beautifully that it is my favorite sunscreen of the super groups to apply on the face. When I know I'm gonna be in the sun all day, I will layer my sunscreens. I will be applying so much sunscreen on my face um, and body. Uh, this is one of them that I apply as my first layer of sunscreen defense. The Glow Sunscreen, uh, this one does not have the hum homosalate. Homosalate, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Uh, so if that is something you're not comfortable using. It is one of those ingredients that, you know, some people say, um, what do some people say about it? I shouldn't hint about it and not tell you what some people say. Okay. It says, um, in vitro studies have shown it had, might have some estrogenic activity. Again, they were not conducted on humans under real world, uh, conditions. So I kind of feel like it's the octanoxate type of study. Um, the glow is tinted and it has a nice glow. It's not glowy, but it really is a pretty sunscreen. Can, I don't know, can you tell the difference? It's very subtle, but it just has a, a real nice little sheen to it without looking greasy. So that is a, another real pretty sunscreen. It reminds me the most of my Dermatology Universal Tinted Moisturizer, which is my absolute favorite moisture, uh, sunscreen. The other one is the uh, Supergoop Play. This one is their SPF 50. They call it their Everyday Lotion. It is the same four sunscreens. This one also goes in really well. It blends in well. It does have a little bit more of a whitish cast to it. Like when I'm blending it in, I don't necessarily see it right away. But if I see a reflection, I'm like, oh, I can still see I have a little, little bit of a white the glow. I don't really care about a whitish cast on my body when I'm going out. This is one they sell in a big pump. I like pump sunscreens um, for my body. I usually have one by my door uh, in Florida. So I'm going to look at this. I think it might be a, li a little pricey. That was my thing about Super Goob um, versus some of the other sunscreens. I think you're paying a lot for the name um, versus the ingredients and um, like Banana Boat has a really good pump sunscreen also. So, uh, but it is very cosmetically elegant. Okay, another sunscreen ingredient that is exclusive to L'Oreal is called Mexerol. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It's also, um, when listed on an ingredient list, it's listed as Encampsule. And so that is really good at protecting against, I believe it's the short, short rays or short UVA rays, which are again, some of the anti-aging rays. So La Roche-Posay has a Athelios SX sunscreen. I found this on Amazon and it does have 2% of that encampsule uh, or that Merixol ingredient. It, 
Again, it's exclusive to L'Oreal, so you're not going to find it um, widespread amongst the different brands of sunscreen. This is an SPF 15, and this is a daily use moisturizer with sunscreen. So it is definitely a heavier product. It feels really light going on, but then after it absorbs down, then it starts feeling like a face moisturizer. It definitely has a little bit more tack and a little more thickness feeling to it because it's supposed to be used as your facial moisturizer, not on top of your facial moisturizer. So if you're interested in that ingredient, you might try the SX. Okay, so let's move on to some of the other chemical sunscreens. This is These are the ones with the octanoxate, and these are my favorite sunscreens. These have both zinc oxide, both a physical and a chemical sunscreen, and it's the Dermatology series. Th these are the Universal Tinted Moisturizer, which is my daily sunscreen, and the Broad Spectrum SPF 45, which is the exact same uh, sunscreen without the tint. So my daughter, she's pretty fair. She, she wears foundations that say fair or ivory, and she can use this tinted moisturizer with no problem. It doesn't look orangey on her. But I've read comments. Some people say that it's too much tint even for them, so they do have a clear version, the broad spectrum uh, sunscreen. Of course, I love dermatology. If you watch my channel, you know that a lot of their products are my ride or die products. I really like the way this feels on my skin, where it blends in, and I think it's reasonably priced. Again, if you use my link, you can save 20%. They're always having sales though, so you don't have to use my link to buy the product because chances are you'll find it on sale or you can sign up for the email list and get 20% off too. So I love this one because it goes on so beautifully. See, so this is a tinted one, very little tint, and it blends beautifully under all of my foundations makeup. I have not used a foundation, though I'm sure there might be one out there, but I've not used one that pills when I'm using it on top of the Dermatology sunscreen. So I think it's extremely cosmetically elegant and I really like the sun protection that I get with it. Um, you, like I said, you also find the octanoxate as the sunscreen ingredient in a lot of foundations. Oh, the sunscreen that I had given my husband that I don't have in front of me was the kind of a whole, everyone's holy grail sunscreen. It was the Alta MD broad spectrum sunscreen, which is also a chemical octanoxate and a physical sunscreen combination. So that one was really beautiful. It was a clear sunscreen. It blends in great. Like I said, I gave my husband a bunch of different sunscreens. That's when he decided to pack into his little dot kit to take with him uh, as he travels. But if you don't want to use any chemical sunscreens, there are the physical sunscreens. So Dermatology also has a physical tinted moisturizer. It's a little bit lighter tint than the chemical one, but this is a zinc oxide titanium dioxide combination. And it also is cosmetically elegant, not quite as dark, like I said, as the universal. And well, it's blending out pretty good on my arm right here. Sometimes it does take a second for it to blend or absorb completely into my skin. Now, another sunscreen I've been trying that is great for applying over makeup is the Color Science SPF 50 Broad Spectrum Sunscreen. This is a 22.5% titanium dioxide and 22.5% zinc oxide. So it's a, got a lot of physical sunscreen in it. And I like the way it finishes my face. I got two shades. This is tan and I also purchased it in deep. Uh, the tan is perfect for me now. They said the medium was their best selling shade and so I know I'm darker than the majority of people. So that's why I went a little bit darker and said that this tan works really well for me. And I do apply it um, kind of as my powder down. I have not used it alone yet, so I'm not really comfortable with saying this alone is going to give you the best coverage because I have a hard time seeing how much that I'm applying and knowing that I'm applying it everywhere. So I do use it as a topper to retouch my sunscreen. There are also cosmetic brands that 
use physical sunscreens only as their sunscreen in their foundations. So this is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Foundation Full Coverage Moisturizer. It's an SPF 50, it's a, a tinted moisturizer. And this one is titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. It does not have any chemical sunscreens in it. And I believe their CC cream is too. It is a little bit thicker feeling going on. I think that's just the nature of having the physical sunscreens, but it is very beautiful coverage. And when I'm going out, I have been putting this on, this on on top of it, started my day with this, applying this as I'm walking out the door and I'm touching up with this as I'm sitting in the sun because this is the one I've tossed in my purse. So I do layer a lot of different sunscreens on when I'm going to be out in the sun for extended periods of time because I think that is really your best defense um, against the damaging sun rays is the frequent reapplication. Having said that, I don't apply sunscreen if I'm just sitting around the house. I don't apply sunscreen if I'm just getting into my car and driving to the grocery store. I am not a sun avoider. I am one of those that actually thinks uh, fresh air and sunshine is very good for both mental and physical health. Um, so that's probably for another video. I've been saying for two years that I should do that video, but I am not a complete sunblock person. But when I am sitting outside for extended periods of time, I do like to protect my skin as much as possible. So that's what I have to say about all the sunscreens and what I am using and the way I'm using them. Definitely do some of your own research when you hear people talk about the different ingredients, even other social media influencers. Um, because there are a lot of studies out there and sometimes I feel like they're making you scared of using sunscreen and so you don't use it at all and that's probably the worst thing you can do. Okay, but that's it. That is my sunscreen roundup. I tried to go as fast as I can. I, mean, I know this is, was still a long video. Let me know down below what your favorite sunscreen is and thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.